Hello everyone, Bray again. Today I'm going to show you the workshop. Come on, let's take a look. Okay, well the workshop is about 9 feet on the inside framing by about 17 feet uh, front to back. And as you can see, I'm standing outside and uh, it's all I can do to get the entire workshop in view. Let's uh, walk inside and take a, a quick peek. I installed a 100 amp service right here. So what I did here, you can see that this uh, conduit is going to the outside. Let's take a quick look at that. There is the conduit where it comes up uh, and through the shed. Uh, that goes underground into the house where I tapped into the main panel. One of the most important things in a workshop is the workbench. This one you can see has steel legs. I got that from McMaster Car and I made a 2x4 frame and put some melamine on top. Uh, here you can see there's a small engine that I'm modifying to fit onto my one of my little boats. If you're interested in seeing my boats, there'll be a link in the upper right. Uh, there's my radio alarm, and what's interesting about this is that the radio alarm actually sits underneath the surface of the table. So you can see I've got a joint right here and a joint right here. So whenever this gets destroyed, I can just replace that one piece of melamine. Um, I don't have a table saw. I you do all my sawing, with, you know, any linear uh, cutting, with the radial arm. I find it great. Yes, it is a dangerous saw, but uh, for me it works uh, It works great. It takes up very little room, and it's very versatile, so I really enjoy that. If you notice, I've got some uh, shelving, and it actually goes all the way around the shop. Now, this shop was an old carriage house, so the, it has kind of a low ceiling. You can see it goes all the way around the shop. So I was able to make use of some of this space uh, up here for storage. Now, these uh, shelves are extremely strong. Each one of these brackets is rated for 600 pounds. And as you can see, there are quite a few brackets. Uh, really take, really uh, satisfy some of my need for storage. Uh, over here, we have my big blue lathe. If you are interested in uh, seeing how I built that, the, uh, there's a link in the upper right take you to a series of videos about that lathe. It's capable of swinging to the tool rest uh, arm there about 60 or so inches and to the floor about 8 foot. Um, I still haven't had anything huge on here. Biggest piece I had is about 36 inches. Um, uh, works very well. If you're, if you're curious about that you can see it in the video. I, uh, I keep some of my face plates. I have about 17 face plates. <laughs> Quite a few. Uh, there's a chuck up there and there is uh, my gearbox for my next lathe build if you're uh, curious about that. There's the spindle you saw before and that are that right there are, those are the bearings. Uh, yes, they're quite big bearings. If you're curious about this next lathe I'm building, uh, you can see a video of that in the upper right. And there are some of my turning tools there. Uh, in this corner I have one of my router tables. This is the one I use most often. I made a, uh, a little stand for it. It was a uh, just some stuff I had lying around uh, on a on a uh, furniture dolly. Uh, this is my other mini lathe that I built out of necessity. Cost me zero dollars, completely free for me to build this lathe. If you're curious about that, there'll be another video in the upper right. Uh, this little toolbox is just for lathe-related items. Uh, so on this uh, shelf here, you can see I ended up mounting some boxes underneath. So this one I have some of my air tools. And you can see the brackets that are actually holding that. And let me move it down here. You can see that the bottom sheet of plywood actually extends to the, uh, the 2x12s. And um, actually anchors the bottom there. So very, very strong. Uh, no issues uh, with that. And another one here for, as you guessed it, fasteners and some, um, some other trays of, of hardware. Um, right here we have my, and you can see it. It is an old shopsmith. Uh, 10 ER uh, and it's a very nice uh, machine if you're not familiar with them you can look them up they are uh, one of the original all-in-one machine tools I have it permanently set up as a drill press as you can see that's all I use it for I don't use it for anything else I don't use it as a lathe or anything it's a permanent drill press and does a fantastic job at that some of the other functions were not great so I said you know what it doesn't need to be anything else but a drill press here we have my power station tool station, whatever you want to call it. It, uh, it has a lot of tools and you can see it's got about uh, five uh, bench top tools on the surface. But what's nice about it is that it rotates. 
And if you're curious about that, I do have videos uh, on that, or one video. I'll put a link in the upper right for you so you can see that. Uh, it also has tool storage inside. Lots of tool storage. Uh, and then coming back around, you can see more of the, um, of the shelf there. And my little, um, I think it's a jar mac. My little, yeah, jar mac table saw for little tiny things, which I hardly do anymore. I had that for architectural models. This is my, my bandsaw that I use all the time. It's a tilting head uh, craftsman bandsaw. Now, what I like about this is that the table is always horizontal. Isn't that handy? The table is always horizontal and the whole head tilts. And that's a lot easier than trying to balance a piece of wood on a angled table. And of course, the, the uh, rolling toolbox, I keep my mechanics tools. It's about 50-50, 50% me mechanics tools and 50% woodworking tools in there. The tackle box, that's where I keep my drill bits. It's very handy. And uh, you can see I found this little box that was going to get scrapped. And I grabbed it, screwed it in here, and it's perfect height for some of the chemicals that I use around the shop. So turning back around, you can see I have some of my, my clamps right there. Um, those are my, my four foot clamps. They, uh, they're very handy and I got them the only place I can fit them. And there's my overhead door. So that is, uh, you can see the wood on either side. This used to be a carriage house and those were big doors. I closed them in and, um, and uh, put in an overhead door where it was very simple. And of course my ladder being stored up above, uh, it, does it, it, it when I need it it's there and otherwise it's out of the way so it's very handy again you can see I have lots of light in here you can see I've got five lights here and if you notice when you look uh, look around there is very little shadow there's very little shadow on the surfaces I mean there's some but everything is very well lit uh, this little space has a ton of light and you may also notice I have no windows uh, I did that th this Carriage house had two windows in it. Uh, I took them out. I didn't want any distraction. I don't want to know what time it is. I don't know. I don't want to know if I've been in here 12 hours or more. Uh, so there is no distraction. It's like being in my own cave. You can see that there's a fan over there. See that fan? I'm gonna. The the uh, switch is on uh, the wall here by the lights. So you can see that's my exhaust fan. Turn it off. Especially when it's hot, I can exhaust hot air and any fine dust that might be in the um, uh, in the shop. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I do read them all and uh, I do respond as soon as I can. Thank you.